Welcome to my lecture on chapter 10, which is on tools for inferential statistics. So um, I want to discuss this case of echolocation by bats. So in order to fly, bats expend a lot of energy. And because of that, we have some data on bats that fly you, and flat bats that use echolocation when they fly. Now, there's an additional cost for the bat of echolocation. And so zoologists were wondering if bats that use echolocation expend more energy. So um, looking at these slides, the question are, is are the combined energy expenses of flight and echolocation greater than for non-echolocating bats? And this sounds like it could be a case of a numerical data uh, versus numerical data. That is the echolocating bats and the non-echolocating bats. Okay. Now in our data set we have um, also birds that do not use echolocation and that's used because they're very similar, okay? And a very similar type of animal. So one big question I have is, could we use the simple t-test to answer this question? And my answer is yes, but it wouldn't be the best type of statistical analysis. Um, and I'm gonna explain why to you in a minute, but first let's just explore this, okay? So this was the, uh, question raised by zoologist. So if the combined energy cost of echolocation and flight in bats was the sum of the flight and cost at the rest, echolocation energy costs, or if the bats had developed a means of echolocation and flight that made the combined energy costs less than the sum. Um, so if they had kind of evolved a trait so that it wasn't so uh, so taxing on them energy-wise, okay? Well, let's first just look at our data. So I have the mass of the bat, I have the type of the bat, so it could be a non-echolocating bat, it could be a non-echolocating bird, and further down in this data set, there are echolocating bats. And here we have a measure of the energy that the bat has. So I'm going to do a first, a simple t-test, ignoring mass. So I'm just going to compare the energy expended by the type of bat. And when we do that, you might do a box plot, okay? So these are the echolocating bats, and these are the non-echolocating bats. So it wouldn't be a big surprise to see that any comparison of two means is gonna reject the hypothesis that Echolocating bats versus non-echolocating bats are not equal, um, but there's some problems with this comparison. So I used a two-sample t-test, and there's a big problem with that. There's not enough data in the uh, data set. There's only four and sixteen. Um, another problem is that the data doesn't look normally distributed. Um, and going beyond that, even if we had the proper sample sizes and norm normality of the data set, this data set fails to take into account other variables. So if we go back to our slide on, on our data, we have the mass and we can see that some of the some of the bats are, have quite a bit more mass, and we might expect that they have more energy, expend more energy because they're heavier. Um, so let's have a look at that. If we take a graph of take a graph of mass versus energy expended, that's numerical versus numerical data, and we're going to see that there's a relationship between the two variables. Okay, so here's the plot, the scatter plot for the bats. So these are the, here's three echolocating bats and here's the fourth. That's the filled in, okay. 
Now our non-equaloid hitting bets, those are the triangles. They're all over here. They have a bitter, bigger body mass. So it seems like, of course, they're going to expend more energy. And that's what this relationship says. Now notice that we have the log of energy expended and log of body mass here, okay? And that makes our relationship between our two variables more linear as we're discussing transformations of regression. Okay. So when you do a, a regression analysis, you'll come across this. I did one in R, okay, and it's in the code that's provided. I did the log of energy by the log of mass. And it says that when I can back transform this model, the intercepts minus 1.46 and the coefficient on the log of mass is 0.8, I back transform taking the exponential. Here's the 1.46 plus this, that translates into 0.23 times mass to the 0.8 power. That's the model that this suggests, that is the relationship between mass and energy for these, um, these bats, okay? So it seems quite likely that mass accounts for the relationship in, in energy, or, but the question is further, could it be that the species takes into account this echolocation. And so I can run a further regression, a multiple regression analysis on this. Okay. And I'm gonna add another variable into my regression. So notice this is a sim sing of one variable regression, the log of mass and the log of energy. One input, one output. Okay. I'm going to have more than one input and a single output. And by the way, this is the regression line against the data that we just looked at. It looks like a very nice regression line on the log log scale. So keep in mind, this is untransformed. Okay. Um, and just a note, this on the log log scale is linear, but to get your equation, your model, you need to um, undo the transformation and obtain this final model, which is not linear, because we're not taking the log of the log of x and the log of y. Okay. Okay. So based on these findings, um, it we want to take into account additional variables. So we're going to account for the type of the species of bat. And we're gonna do this rather than a t-test on a two-sample t-test because a two-sample t-test fails to really capture all the variables. Regression allows us to account for more variables. We can account for weight and we can also account for species type. We've already done weight, but let's take into account species type. Um, there are two ways that we can do this. The first one is a slope and an intercept. Um, that is, the species type may affect the intercept of your regression equation, or it may affect the slope. So we're gonna do this more complicated, and this is gonna be called the full model first, okay? When we do our slope and intercept, we get the following output in R. We get this equation, log of mass, and we get its estimated effect, 0.8. But I've taken into account the type or the species of the, of the bird or the bat. So we have non-echolocating bats have this um, additional intercept. This echolocating bird has this intercept. Oh, then this is called an interaction term. These two are called interaction terms. Now, in the right, I have 
two p-values in red because they're highly significant, meaning it's, not, it's highly unlikely that these two values are zero. However, the ones that are highlighted in yellow do not have a significance level even at the 10% level, indicating they're possibly zero. Before we go ahead and explore these p-values on the right, I'm going to go ahead and write down the model for this equation. And I'd also like to note that this model has one, two, three, four, five, six terms. So six parameters that need to be estimated. Okay. Here's our model. Remember we took the log of the y, so we have log of energy equals minus 1.47 times 0.8 times the log of mass times 1.26 times the not eco. So if you're not an eco locating bat, this value is 1. Otherwise, it's 0. And then it's minus 0.11 times not eco birds. And then here's our interaction terms. Not eco bat times the log of mass and not eco birds times the log of mass. Um, we want to ultimately model energy, so we back transform. We undo our transformation, taking the exponential, giving us this thing. Okay, and that's a little bit hard to read. Okay, now believe it or not, we have uh, this is not considered a big model. This is considered a medium-sized model. Okay, now I'd like to point out. That I could ask you, what is what does what is the model for the echolocation, echolocating bats? And to do that, you would take this equation, and because it's an echolocating bat, I'm gonna take the equation here, and I'm gonna plug in zero for not echolocating bat. Zero means that it's false, and one means it's true. Okay? So I put in a zero because it's false. It's not an echolocating bat. It, well, I suppose I said that wrong. It's not not an echolocating bat, i.e. it is an echolocating bat, so I put zero. Okay. It's not an echolocating. It doesn't meet the requirement of being a non-echolocating bird, so I put a zero. And uh, then zeros for the other two variables. I just won't wind up with these first two terms, which translates into this model here. Now for a non-echolocating bat, I have this value here, but I'm going to put a 1 here because it is a non-echolocating bat. But it's not a non-echolocating bird, so I put a 0 over here. Okay. <coughs> I put a 1 again here because the requirement is true. It is a non-echolocating bat and a 0 over here. When I combine this 0.21 with the 0.8, that gives me 0.59, that coefficient. Okay. And then I take this minus 1.47 in the exponential and I add it to 1.26, that's going to give me 0.81 when I take the exponential. Now for non-echolocating birds, I do the similar thing. I put zeros for non-echolocating bats and ones for non-echolocating birds. So I get a 1 here and a 1 here. When I combine the 0.8 with this 0.03, I'm going to get 0.83. And then this point one point minus 1.47 will combine with the minus 0.11 to give me a minus point, excuse me, to give me 0.2, which is the exponential of that number. Okay. okay, so that is the model written down. And it's three models for the price of one. Remember, Categorical variables such as type get zeros or ones. One if it's true and zero if it's false. Now let's picture this model. So notice is changing this constant term is changing in each of them, and so is that exponent. 
So slope and intercept are changing in the log-log scale. This is the log-log scale pictured here. So I have the eco-locating bats, that's this main line. In fact, it passes right through that point. It's the model for the eco-locating bats right here. Okay. Now for the non-eco-locating bats, I have this equation right here. And it has a different slope and a different intercept because that's what we allowed in the model. And it passes through these points right here, the ovals that are not filled in. Uh, then for the non-eco-locating birds, it has nearly identical slope and intercept, but it's slightly different, and it has this equation right here. Okay. So that's the graph of the model on the log-log scale. Now, if we go back to this slide here, we'll notice that this 0.35 and this 0.77, they're the p-values that the interaction terms, these two are the interaction terms that affect the slope, that they could be zero. So it's quite possible, we cannot reject the hypothesis, that this, this coefficient, this minus 0.21 and 0.03 could in fact be zero, that the species do not vary in the intercept, uh, but in the, the slope for either of these two models. So you might try a model with no interaction term, okay? This will be slightly less complicated. So in this model, I'm still taking into account the type, but I'm not changing the coefficient of the slope. Okay. So R gives us this output, and when I write down the model, so this model corresponds to if researchers believe that log energy expenditure did not vary by type, then we'd have this model. Okay. And this is our coefficients for each of the terms. Notice there's no interaction. This corresponds to three different models. Okay. Uh, sorry there. And the three different models correspond to putting zeros here for the eco-locating bats because they don't fit the category of not being a non-eco-locating bat and they don't fit the category of being a bird, so they get zero. This is the equation we get and it simplifies to this. Okay. For non-eco-locating bats, I have to put a one right here because it meets that criteria, but it, it's not a bird, so it gets a zero here. And this is its equation. Now for non-eco-locating birds, we have this equation. It's not a bat, it's not a non-eco-locating bat, so it gets zero, and here's the one. And this is the equation that it simplifies to, which becomes this, okay? So if you're asked to state a model, which could possibly be an exam type question, um, you could be asked, is this the model for non-eco-locating birds? Is this the model for non-eco-locating bats? Um, and is this the mo a full model? Okay. Okay, full model was actually a poor, poor choice of words, but let's go with it. Um, now, in terms of our graph, there are three lines on the log-log scale that this corresponds to. So this solid black line, that's for the eco-locating bats. For the non-eco-locating birds, we have this line right here, the red one. And notice it's a line on the log-log scale, but when you back transform it, it's non-linear, okay? Uh, then this line that's dotted, but it's really, really close to the eco-locating bats, that's the one 
that's the one that is for the non-echolocating bats. And notice these are all parallel lines. And that's because that's how our model is set up. It affects just the intercept, not the slope. In our first model, we were affecting both the intercept and the slope. And you might ask, is it possible just to interfect to affect the um, the slope but not the intercept? And my answer is yes, but it's extremely rare and statisticians typically don't just have the interaction terms. It's believed that if you have the interaction terms, then you have the term itself. Okay, So unless you have a strong reason for only having an interaction term, don't do it. Now, you might ask this natural question, which model is better? Okay. Well, we have a way of determining that. Is the model with six terms better, or is the model with four terms better? And to determine which one is better, we do an ANOVA F test. Okay. And this F test is calculated in this way. First, we need to identify the full model. The full model is the one with more terms. So that's the first one we presented, the one that affects both the slopes and the intercept. So the reduced model is the one with less terms. Um, in our F statistic, we're going to compute in the numerator what's called the extra sum of squares. So that's the sum of squares of the residuals, so the error from the reduced model, minus the sum of squares from the full model. Now we're going to divide by the number of coefficients tested, so we're going to test 2 because we went from a term that affected the slope and the intercept with 6 terms to one that just affected the intercept with 4 terms, so 6 minus 4 will give us the 2. So the number of coefficients tested is this 2. Okay. And one important thing that I'd like to note is that this F test tests simultaneously in the way that an ANOVA does, that the coefficients here, so let me go up, that these this coefficient and this coefficient simultaneously, that their coefficients are zero. So it's testing simultaneously that two coefficients are zero. That's what the ANOVA F test will do. Now, if you want to do this in R, you'll use this command. And that's in your R script that I provided. And once you execute that in R, this is the output that you're going to get. Okay. So it's going to say model 1, and it's going to give you a regression equation versus model 2's regression equation. And the null hypothesis is that model 1 is better. Okay. Once we calculate this, we get this p-value of 0.52. That's not in the significance range. So we're going to fail to reject our null hypothesis and conclude model 1 is better, that we don't need the extra terms. Um, keep in mind this simultaneous test is more appropriate in this setting. Okay. I want to go back to the output. So the t-statistic calculated here test the hypothesis that the single coefficient, not more than one, ANOVA tests more than one coefficient is zero. And it tests it more efficiently because the multiple comparisons can, can possibly lead you to wrong conclusions. Against the alternative, the coefficient isn't zero. Now, in your LM command, it's already calculated for us. And we can see that the coefficient for the non-echolocating bats is not significant, meaning that we cannot conclude that non-echolocating bats expend more energy 
than the non than the echolocating bats, and we're able to a answer the scientific question. Okay, so the scientific question we're being asked is: Do echolocating bats differ from non-echolocating bats? Okay, and we're able to more appropriately test this with the regression analysis. Okay. And we concluded that it wouldn't affect its slope or its intercept, meaning it has no effect, whether it's an echolocating or a non-echolocating, after accounting for the mass of the bat. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't an effect. It just means that with the variation, we're not able to conclude that it is different from zero. Okay. So when you're reporting your analysis, I ask that you please include the confidence interval for the coefficient. So notice we can't include the coefficient as not zero. So it's our default is that it's zero, but its estimated coefficient is this. And then after we back transform, it says that only the it says that the non echolocating birds only estimated only expend 92% of the energy of the echolocating bats okay but it could be the same in fact if we did a 95% confidence interval for the coefficient these are the estimates and we need to back transform so it says a 95% confidence interval on the energy expended for the non-echolocating bats. They could possibly only expend 60% of the energy of the echolocating bats, or they may expend 142% or 42% more energy. Notice zeros in that interval, so we can't reach a solid conclusion that they have, that they expend more or less, okay? There isn't any statistical evidence, okay? So this was, are the main things I want you to take away from this chapter. I want you to take away the ANOVA test for comparing two models. I want you to be able to take away the output for the linear model command, know that these are important intercepts. These ones possibly could be zero, and you need to compare them with, um, you need to compute a confidence interval. And it's able to investigate a scientific question, which you could have possibly gotten wrong if you'd done t-tests. For example, if you just split them into echolocating bats, versus non-equilocating bats, it won't have accounted for other variables, such as the weight of the bat, which is a big one. Okay. Um, before I conclude, I just would like to mention a couple of other topics. The book briefly discuss F-tests versus T-tests. A t-test you'd use when you want to determine if a single coefficient could be zero. An f-test is com for comparing two models in which one a subset of the coefficients are zero. Okay, So I had two coefficients be zero when I did the f-test, the ANOVA f-test. Um, the book briefly talks about variable selection. When you include different variables, it could affect the significance of the other variables once one is dropped or included. And that's a big topic and a current topic in statistics. Um, the book mentions that the proportion of variance explained, R squared, can always be made to be 100% if you add enough variables. Um, this is uh, a very bad thing for this reason to include too many variables. And that's a form of data hacking um, in which you're not actually modeling the relationship of the data. Um, 
So a lot of people use something called the adjusted R squared. It adds a penalty for your model if you include too many variables. Um, in my next lecture, I'll talk about the BIC and AIC, Bayesian Information Criterion, which are also forms of error that include a penalty for more variables. Um, and there's a couple of different ways in which we use regression, but um, your book briefly talks about prediction, which seeks to explain the data, which does not seek to explain the data, but just tries to get the most accurate values possible. Okay, um, And this is concerning the R squared, because I can always have a very good prediction for the observed data, but for my next observation, if I include too many variables, I could be wildly off. Um, Occam's razor states that the simplest model is the best, and this is a big topic in statistics. And I just want to leave you with Occam's razor. If you have the choice of choosing a simpler model, do it. Um, I'm going to switch over to R, so you have this code in your uh, module for this week, and you can run through everything that we did here. So this is the t-tests that we have here. Um, these are the graphs. These are doing the transforms, and then graphing the various models that I have. Okay. Now down here, I compute the confidence interval and the estimated coefficient um, for the coefficient of regression. And here's your homework. So number 30, number 27, number 26, and then written problems number 3 and 5. I'm briefly just going to run uh, number 30 because this is very similar to the bat question. It asks, so let's just look at a little snippet of the data. So it here we have our weekly earnings or a weekly wage in R. Okay. We have other variables such as education, education category, uh, metropolitan status, the person's age. So the older you are, that may affect your weekly earnings. How educated you are may affect your weekly earnings. Uh, what area, if you're in the Midwest versus the East Coast or the Northeast may affect um, your weekly earnings and if you're in the metro area or a non-metro area. Okay. Um, so my question is, is, do, is, do weekly earner, earnings differ by an individual's race? And so what I'm asking you to do is to build a regression model um, for weekly earnings excluding the variable race. And I want you to build the best regression model you can. Okay. Now you should use things like the co test that the coefficients are zero if you want to consider dropping them. And the uh, and any of the variables here to see if they can possibly explain the difference in weekly earnings. So for example, someone may earn less because they have less education or possibly because of their age or their region. And I'd like you to account for all those other variables as best you can. And you can drop variables if you, with an F test or with the test for coefficients, uh, then you're going to add in, for example, this one. You're going to add the variable race to your best regression model. And if that coefficient is statistically significant, that means that race plays a role in your weekly earnings. Just as when we did the regression with the energy expenditure of bats, we accounted for the body mass first, uh, then we added the type of bat, and we saw that the coefficient for the type of bat didn't actually matter. So I'm asking you to interpret 
the coefficient of race and to ask if that statistically matters after you account for all these other variables. Okay. Um, I'll briefly just look at the graph here. I looked at the graph for the log of the weekly earnings and I did that because I saw a log transformation was needed on weekly earnings. Okay. Um, let's first attach the data. Okay. And then it's going to take a minute to come up. And notice some of the variables, like weekly earnings versus uh, education category, that should be a box plot. So the pairs command is not the best one, but it does all of them at once. So you'll want to do weekly earnings by race, by education category, by metro, by region, by a box plot. And I didn't include that here, but I expect you to do that. Okay. So here's the log of the weekly earnings by region. We can see that some regions um, have a little bit higher average than the others, but would need to create a box plot. And definitely the metro status seems to affect it. Okay. Now the age, you may consider transforming age as well. That's up to you. Um, so you may want to do additional transformations, but this seems to have somewhat of a linear relationship. Uh, then another category, another numerical one is education code. It seems like as education goes up, the weekly log of the weekly earnings goes up. So those two seem to have kind of a linear relationship. Okay. Um, so I'm asking you to do a regression on everything here but race. And then, so everything to the left here, uh, then add in race and see if that is statistically significant with that t-test. Okay, if it is, you're going to see what role race plays, and I'd like for you to state the model. This is a very similar um, type of problem to what you're going to do in your case study, just FYI. And I'm going to stop here, and I'll let you play around with this homework set.